The vast majority of people don't care about their children. I don't want to smirch uh, everybody, it's just most people. Anybody with two brain cells that synapse at the right speed will realize that the chances that his children will end up in the disasters that you see, he sees on the, on the TV all the time, right, is very, very high. Drugs in schools, and that's the least of the problems. So anybody who's like, thinking about it would be asking around, like, you know, how do we deal with this? How do we... And anyone who's doing that ends up, in, in my case, in, in, ends up in Asia Tour, but there's, other, there's many other places that you'd end up, right? Therefore, what? Most people don't care. Now, if you tell them that, they'll get annoyed at you. <laughs> so it's just between us chickens. <laughs> don't tell How them that. they not care? I mean, don't they? I mean, I don't have kids, so to me, it just seems like if you did have children, you would care about them. Yeah, it would seem that way, but you see that it's not. They're well, in defense of it's not everyone. I'm sorry. No, it's that. not everyone. I said it's not everyone. It's just most people. Right, but I think it's because they're sort of like been dumbed down or overwhelmed. I mean, isn't everyone sort of in Mitzrayim right now? I don't know what that means. In other words, like the everyone is in this so paper, overwhelmed. Still what? I don't know if with that low. You think no, with that like low? Everyone's overwhelmed. Oh, for let me sure, ask you. Let me, sure. ask, let me ask you something. Let's suppose, for instance, the federal government says, you know, this school business is just not working for us. We're going to close all public schools. Thank right? God. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. What would happen? Most people wouldn't send their kids to school. Most. Some would, right? If it worked, because they just don't. Is it? What's the point concept of public school? People don't care enough about their children to pay for their education. So the government says, "Okay, but they are pay. paying for it. They're paying for it through their taxes." I know. We're that's all, because we they are don't all think paying. about it. They don't think about it. The government recognizes that people don't care that much about their children. I don't say they don't care completely. They don't care that much about their children. They're not enough to pay for their education. But how is that even, you know, a guarantee of your caring? That just because you're paying for the education doesn't mean you're going to get a good education. No, I, I, I understand that. But, is it, but at least as a, as a beginning, it's a good sign, right? I don't know and if I agree. People, there's those of people who could afford education, and they don't. You know, you, you, you've heard me this is a point that the Torah makes by the uh, two tribes that come to Moshe um, and they uh, they want they want to take land outside the, the land of Israel. Oh, um, said, Moshe says to them, oh, you care more about your sheep than you do your children. Now, how can you say such a thing? Have you ever met anybody who would admit that they care more about their money than they do their children? Even the people yeah. that I say don't care about their children that much. They would never say such a thing. Everybody thinks they care for their children absolutely. Even the people who put them up for adoption, right? They care about their children. Everybody says they care about their children, right? So what about what about the? Uh, so, so these are the tribes. These are people that came through the desert. These are the students of Moshe. How can Moshe say to them, "You care more about you"? How can anybody care more about their money than children? So it's a very simple. It's a very simple concept. Imagine for a minute you had four schools. One's a public school. One cost five thousand dollars a year. One cost fifty thousand dollars a year, and one cost five hundred thousand dollars a year. Each one you get the education to which you spend. Right? It's, it's, you're getting a very, good value for money. Right? So you have one family that's dirt poor, right? And they scrape together whatever they can. Really, by rights, they should send their kids to public school, but they send their kids to, to the to the to the five thousand dollar a year school. They borrow money, they take credit cards out, blah blah blah, and they push themselves. Right, you follow? Mm -hmm. The super rich family they could send their kids by rights to send their kids to the five hundred thousand dollar a year school, but they go listen. You know, we went to public school and we turned out okay, right? We're going to save a little money and send their kids to the fifty thousand dollar school. It's still a very, very good education. I mean, it's better than most people ever get. Right? You understand? 
And with the 50,000 that saved the money, go on nicer vacations, buy a nicer house, buy a yacht maybe, etc., etc. Right, you follow? So you've got one kid in the $50,000 score and one kid's in the $5,000 score. Which kid's going to turn out better? The $5,000 one. Oh, ding, 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 ding. Why? Because uh, the child that goes to the $5,000 school knows that the parents made a huge amount of effort for them to even be able to afford to go to that school. Oh, uh, that's an assumption. Right. It, it's more than that. You see, you see, when it comes to children, this, in life, there are many things that are second best is perfectly fine. Like I've got a birthday coming up. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there, I would love a Bentley. <laughs> 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 but if you send me a jag, I can live with it. <laughs> but in, in life, second best is, is perfectly fine in many things. Yeah, you didn't tell him you're getting him a Maserati? A Maserati, that will do too, right? <laughs> He's so driving you know? almost a 20-year-old car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So in many things, second best is perfectly fine, right? In some things... Second best is a disaster. What's that with your children? Right? When you do second best in your children, you, I, I've seen this so many times with rich people. They think they're doing better for their children because they're giving them better than they had. No! You have to do the best you possibly can. Yeah, but you know, the only problem I've always had with this pro this scenario is that Really, for the rich family, the best that they can do is spend more time with their kid. Oh, yeah, I'm just that's, using 100%. That's, 100%. That's, 100%. That's the thing that's the, yes, the thing they have I'm, less of that they can't give. 100%. 100%. I'm not arguing that point. But the, the point I'm making is just using money as a symbol of everything. Like included in that. You know, yeah. it, it's very interesting. They did a study, which shows you how stupid people can be. They did a study and they found the children you know how come all the kids you know in high school every high school in america today every high school the private ones the jewish ones ever has access to drugs if a kid wants drugs today it's tough when i was at high school you couldn't get it but today everybody has access so they wanted to see that like, what made the kids right the same access become drug addicts and the other kids sitting right next to them in school not a drug addict and they found the, the, the one of the factors was if the parents read to the kids. So they said, oh, you want to save your kids from drugs? Read to them. No, you idiot. Right? It's like, if you care enough about your children to read to them, then that is the $500,000 score. Right? Because included in all of that. In other words, the parents send their kids to the $500,000 school is because they want to give their children everything they possibly can, which would include reading to them and time with them and everything and everything. Right? You understand? The, the, the kid knows he's important. Right? When the kid, there's an old story they tell, I don't know whether it's true or not, but my kids came home from school once, one of the rabbis told, told them, is it, is it what's more important? He said, the rabbi said, the, the, the Rebbe, there was a story of a Rebbe asking his students, what's more important than learning Torah? And one of the kids said, Chulant. So the Rebbe got upset, said, well, how can you say Chulant? He says, well, every time I say to my father, I want to learn with you on Saturday, he says, after I eat my Chulant. So the kid <laughs> says, it must be that Chulant is more important than learning. Right? You've got to be careful of these messages your kids get. Anyone who has kids should realize Every parent thinks they know what they're doing. <laughs> like Rav Noach used to say, he used to say, nobody walks down the aisle saying, I'll give it a 50-50. Right? Everybody thinks they know what they're doing. You're getting married, it's easy, piece of cake. Whatever, how stupid do you think I can be? Right? Everybody knows how to get married. So everybody walks down the aisle saying, I, this is for life. Right? So what went wrong? You obviously don't know what you're doing. So anyone who's got kids, we realize, I, I think I know what I'm doing, but everybody else thinks they know what they, knows what they're doing and they mess up their kids. So I, I, I've got to assume, I don't know what I'm doing. You've got to figure, you know, you've got to be open, you've got to figure out and look at all the possibilities and ask people. Is that, if you, anyone who does that 
would end up in Asia Torah or some equivalent program. Right? Jews or non-Jews? Anybody who asks that question will be thinking, what have I got to do? We'll be asking the questions, what do I got to do to make sure my children turn out the best they possibly can be?